Welcome. Abiding in the presence of Christ is our call this week. How do we abide and how do we encourage abiding behavior? And perhaps most important, what does abide mean? We need to consider some sort of teaching by example. So let's find that out. Today our goal is for us to make it our lifelong habit abiding in Christ. You can probably think of many ways where we can cultivate the ability or the tendency and desire to abide in Christ. We are practicing this abiding in Christ as we worship together with the hope that it will continue after the benediction is pronounced and the postlude ends. Cultivating habits for lifelong worship is a part of what we do when we gather for worship, however we gather these days. God is the true vine, and we are the branches. Connected to God, connected to bear fruit. Connected to God, or we wither away. Connected to God or useless, we come to worship God, who is the true vine. And today we ask God, teach us how to remain connected so that we might bear good fruit. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy 
Let us pray. Divine vine grower, the soil of your love nurtures the roots of our lives each and every day. As we consecrate ourselves into your loving care, plant us in the soil of your love that we may abide in Christ, our true vine and bear the fruit of your love and grace. Give us rain in the seasons of doubt and nourish our growth, that our harvest of love may bless the world. In your bountiful name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading is from the Gospel of John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. And I'm reading from the Common English Bible. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and He trims any branch that produces fruit, so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed, because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch can produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't remain in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit, and in this way prove that you are my disciples. The Lord blessed us with the reading of His Holy Word. Amen. I'm wondering if we are willing to abide in anything, to immerse ourselves wholly in something, to allow anything to captivate our heart and life, to view our whole existence through that one lens. Initially, I want to say no. No one would be willing to give him or herself in that way. It sounds too constricting. But then I begin to think about the many things that we give ourselves to. Our jobs, our families, our hobbies, interests, or activities. 
I begin to think about the things that we spend our time doing, the things that we give our lives to. Many of us are what? Many of us are sports fans. So we dress up, we go to the games, and we make the time. Some of us love our television programs, so we sit there and even being watch. We cannot wait for the next season to begin again. So, as it turns out, we are constantly abiding, constantly living in, taking residence in, fixing ourselves permanently on many things in our lives. Our abiding speaks to our rooting. And it turns out that we are rooting in different ways every day. We do so every moment of our lives. We kid ourselves if we think that those things that root us are not affecting us, shaping us, and transforming us. The proof of our shaping is evident all around us. That which we value, which we spend our time doing, the activities we engage in, our attitudes and ways of engagement all speak to the things that captivate our hearts. These things are the fruit of our abiding, the fruit of our rootedness. All we have to do is pay attention to our daily smartphone, notification to recognize the fruit of our abiding, violence, objectification of neighbor, systemic prejudice, greed, and our incessant consumption speak to our hunger. Where are we abiding? What's our rootedness? Are we truly strongly rooted? Are we truly abiding in Jesus? Are we letting Jesus abide in us? This is a difficult question. I struggle just thinking about it. It seems like it would be an easy answer. I want to say, of course, I abide in Jesus. Of course, Jesus abides in me. This seems like the answer that any good Christian would give. A good answer for a pastor. Right? But if I am honest, I have to recognize that often I do not abide in Jesus. And I'm not alone. We abide Oh, we abide in things that we think we can control. Then they end up, what? They end up controlling us. We abide in things that require little of us, but they end up taking our souls. Abide in the security of my small ideas about God, and they end up making me more anxious than ever. With every contrary opinion on an enemy and every enemy beyond redemption. Our abiding seems fruitful. Our vines seem healthy. They might even be producing grapes. But it's rotting grapes. Underdeveloped grapes. Seedless grapes. Grapes that are unable to produce the wine of the kingdom, grapes of idolatry, self-importance, and self-righteousness, grapes of a myopic view of the world where God only loves those that we love and where God hates like we hate, 
grapes of control over our lives and over others, grapes of our participation in structure that perpetuate an individualistic and egocentric community, grapes that keep us from paying attention to the needs of others, that keep others at arm's length, Grapes that refuse to put ourselves in the place of the other and to live alongside them. It is hard to face the reality that what we have produced is truly not fruit but weeds of how overgrown everything is around us. How truly unrooted and unfruitful it is. How unwilling how we are to face our reality, to be, to be pruned, to have anyone, anything, question our fruitfulness. In other words, we fool ourselves. When in reality, all that stuff that comes from me is not fruit at all. It's just weeds. It's just weeds. These weeds keep me from experiencing the grace that God has given me. That these weeds that I have confused with fruit are not allowing me to move forward and to grow in love of God and neighbor. One of the key places where I see the weediness mistaken for fruitfulness is in the unhealthy rhetoric of the day. In our civic life and in social media engagement. And in our personal conversations, we have become divisive. We have become unwilling to listen, unwilling to see others' points of view. We have couched this wittiness in talk around what is right, truth, in our own desire for a so-called better life. But in the end, we have questioned the motives of others. We have called other names. We have made caricatures of the positions of others and have become peddlers of untruth. All this shows us that none of this is truth. None of this is abiding in Jesus. None of this. We have allowed fear, ignorance, and our limited understanding of God to take root within our soul. We have chosen to allow our souls to become rooted in a religious version of ourselves instead of being rooted in God's abiding love. More importantly, many of us who claim the way of Jesus, who have been called by God to love God and neighbor, to love our enemy, and to be bearers of truth have not lived differently. Instead, we have carried the unfruitful practices of our society into the church and have at times even led the way into strawman arguments, character assassination, and divisive conversation. We should be convicted, for Christ gives us an invitation. Christ says, come and open yourself up to being grafted to me. I have strong roots. I have the DNA needed to make you fruitful. 
alive and to make us flourish, to make all of creation flourish. Jesus calls us to be rooted in Him. We must then cut ourselves from, from our root in sin and death and graft ourselves in the personhood and identity of Jesus. He tells us that only in Him can we truly be fruitful, that everything else is to be cut off, to be removed. Wow! This is difficult work. The gospel provides us with a mirror that shows us possibility, shows us a new way, and shows us the beauty of fruitful abiding of God's call to new life. We must be willing to get in front of that mirror. We must be willing to see that what we are calling fruitfulness is nothing but weeds. We must see that we are really not abiding in Jesus. Instead, we are abiding in our own sense of self. Only then will we be able to see what it looks like to let God clear the way so that we can live a fruitful life. The process is not easy. It requires a dramatic vulnerability, a willingness to let go. It requires our willingness to find a new home and a new center. So Jesus provides us with a way. Our following Jesus grafts us, cuts us from our rootedness in sin and death the unhealthy roots of the human condition, and then allows us to live a new life. Jesus then becomes our root, our vine, with God the Father being the one that grows it, tends it, and makes sure that it is healthy and whole. We are then invited to be what? We are then invited to be the branches. The flowering and the visible presence of Jesus in the field of God's kingdom. So imagine what that looks like. Imagine our commitment as followers of Jesus to allow the Holy Spirit to graft us into Christ, to allow the nurturing, energetic, and fruitful presence of Jesus to be the source of life for us. In order for this reality to happen, we must abide. In order for our branches to be fruitful, we must allow for this relocation, transplantation, and transformation to occur, to happen in us. We are seeing again and again our need to recalibrate our lives into fruitfulness rooted in our abiding, in our changing of address, in the permanence of God's identity as love, making our home in God, inhabiting God's place, living into Christ's identity requires that we acknowledge our need to be grafted, that our salvation, our healing, 
is dependent on our willingness to acknowledge our interdependence with God, each other, and all of creation. Here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church community, are we committed to living in this way? To live in fruitful abiding? Are we committed to living in this way by being agents of conversation, by being space makers for engagement, by being a people that teach one another what it means to be in loving and respectful relationship with those that we disagree? Allowing those things to be the fruit of our abiding in Jesus. This is difficult work. But I believe that we must live in this way. We must be willing to engage the difficult conversations of our day. We must be willing to abide in the midst of the difficulty. That's where Jesus would live. And allow the fruit of our abiding, the love and grace of Jesus, to be made known in our communities. Now more than ever, God's people must lead away into conversations that uplift, conversations that restore, conversations that renew, conversations that reconcile, conversations that honor the image of God in the other. It is my prayer today that we can begin a movement, a movement of people committed to being agents of reconciliation, agents of restoration, agents of reconnection, committed to the movement started and was deeply rooted in Jesus. A movement that somehow we may like just because it's cool, fun, and attractive. But no, it should be instead a movement that inhabits the way of Jesus and that allows for the way of Jesus to inhabit the world. A movement of abiding fruitfulness that shines a light on God's reconciling love in Jesus and in the world. Praise be to God, and amen. Let us pray. God of the far-flung universe and God who is closer than our own heartbeat, we long to dwell in your closeness, abiding in you and you abiding in us. However, the call to abide in other places is strong. 
to abide in the world of popularity and acceptance or in the world of increasing wealth and power centered around our own wants and desires. As we offer our gifts and ourselves to you, help us turn away from other calls and abide in that place of heart's deepest desire in your Son, Jesus, and He in us. In Christ we pray. Amen. Good morning once again. Thank you so much for joining us once again in our virtual worship service here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. And since this is the first Sunday of the month, again, it is our time to recognize and celebrate our birthday and wedding anniversary celebrators. And so, as we uh, uh, as we now recognize our birthday celebrators, let's see all the people who are on our list for the month of May. Happy birthday! And also for our wedding anniversaries uh, for this month, of course, happy anniversary. And now let us sing our uh, wonderful song, God Bless You Today. And, of course, next Sunday, we would like to initially welcome you back to church for our in-person worship service for Mother's Day, May 9 at 10 in the morning. Well, that statement might seem a bit odd because, as you know, we have had church every, every week online or sometimes in our parking lot. Yet, there is just something powerful and amazing about meeting together as a church, especially when it's been many weeks and many months 
since we met together in our, in our church sanctuary. These past few months have been quite trying, to say the least, for all of us, for pastors and staff here at St. Paul United Methodist Church, this building has felt quite empty every time we walk through it. We have missed the sounds of praise reverberate in the sanctuary. We have also missed the voices of our children, our youth, and adults as we fellowship and worship together. When something is taken away that we have enjoyed for years like the church, we begin to realize what a tremendous blessing it is in our lives. The Bible is quite clear of the value of meeting together. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says, Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more, as you see the day approaching. And at this time, I encourage you to be a person full of grace as we gather again. There are many different beliefs and perhaps convictions about the way things should be. Yet, we can be a people who will measure on majors. In other words, remember the essential thing is that we draw closer to Christ than ever before. To be filled with grace in this context would mean that we refrain from being critical to others because their thought process is different than ours. Some aren't ready to return to in-person worship, and that's just fine. Others are ready to start hugging and shaking hands immediately. Yet, my dear friends, we ask that you refrain from that for just a while. That's especially difficult for the huggers in our midst, I know. But we will do our absolute best to make sure we are in a safe yet welcoming environment, both for people and the presence of God. Thank you for giving your leadership an extra dose of grace during this time as well. But our in-person service next Sunday will just be a run-through or a, 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 some sort of a dress rehearsal for our desire to be more prepared and more uh, adept with the new kind of worship that we are trying to, uh, to do here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. And that is in-person worship. We also do want to make a way to perfectly live stream the service to those people who cannot make it for our in-person service or make it to, ch to church. So we are excited to have you back to church come Sunday.
Jesus said, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Let us now approach God. Let us approach Him with confidence. Let us pray. Reason, Lord, you came as a sacrifice for our sin. Give us faith to accept this act of love so that we turn from all human efforts and drink in the atoning righteousness of your death and resurrection. Reason, Lord, you are the true vine and we are the branches. By your Spirit, produce the fruit of, of love, joy, peace, and patience in us for others to taste and enjoy. Keep us from hanging on to love for ourselves. Prune all selfishness from us and fill us with your love. Risen Lord, have mercy on your earth and supply its needs. Where people are hungry, give food. Where people are in distress, comfort them. Where people are in trouble, bring order and peace. And turn the whole world to you in faith, repentance, and praise. Lord Jesus, we celebrate with those who praise and recognize the days of their birth and the day of their union in marriage as important milestones in their lives, for you have constantly blessed and nourished their lives and families with your abiding and most gracious love. Lord Jesus Christ, focus our love on people we know with special needs. Heal those who are unwell, particularly those who are on our prayer list, such as those who are diagnosed with various diseases, those who are undergoing treatment, those who just had surgeries, and those who are on their way to full recovery. And at this time, for those others in need, whom we now name silently in our hearts. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing us and caring for us in all our needs. Constantly intercede for us before our Heavenly Father and open our eyes that we may see Him through you. We ask all this in His holy name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, God loved us and sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. True love is known not in our love for God, but in God's love for us, sacrificing His Son to overcoming the burdens of our sin. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace. Beloved in Christ, this is the joyful feast of the people of God, men and women, youth and children, come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and gather around Christ's table. This table is for all who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share 
in the community of God's people. Christ be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We give thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, whose perfect love casts out our fear, and in whom we live like branches of a vine, drawing our life from him that we might bear much fruit for your glory. Therefore, with hearts lifted high, we offer you thanks and praise at all times through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We remember Jesus, who on the night before he died, he took bread, gave you thanks, broke it, and said, take and eat. Whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink from this, remember me. Let us pray. O oh, come to the table of grace, for Christ is the vine, and we are the branches. O oh, come to the table of love, for whoever does not love does not know God. Come to the table of blessing, for Christ is here to abide in us as we abide in him. And so through him, with him, and in him, in the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be to you, O God, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of your children, we offer the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of life, the lifeblood of Christ, the cup of blessing. Let us eat and drink together for our strengthening in the faith and for the sake of the world. Amen. Let us now partake of the blessings that we have prepared for everyone.
Let us pray. We know, O oh God, that the good news of the resurrection is not to be kept a secret, hidden away as a private promise to a few. Rather, it is to be universal communication of hope and joy to all people, a worldwide proclamation of your renewing, remaking, resurrecting, bringing hope through the faith, the gifts, and the work of the church, your new covenant people. Amen. Go now and love one another, because love is from God. Proclaim God's salvation to every generation. Remain in Christ, 
and like branches of a vine, draw your life from him. And may God, the vine grower, tend you and make you fruitful. May Christ Jesus abide in you and give you life. And may the Holy Spirit cast out all fear and fill you with God's love. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.